here we go. What is up guys, my name is Tom and today's video I'm gonna answer all of your questions about the MacBook Pro 16 inch. And just for the hell of it, I'm recording this entire thing using the built-in webcam on the MacBook Pro. So just to give you a backstory, a couple of weeks ago I released a video about my MacBook Pro. It was sort of a review and it became quite popular as far as my channel is concerned and I got lots of great questions and beautiful comments so thank you you very much guys and gals really made me feel a lot better about myself <laughs> so I wrote down some of the most frequent questions that I got in the comments section but I also googled the most frequent questions about the MacBook Pro and I figured you know since I've been using the MacBook Pro for a couple of weeks at least I could answer some of those questions so let's go is it good for gaming I haven't tested a single game on the MacBook Pro I don't think that this is the ultimate computer for gaming I think that there are a lot better PCs for gaming uh, this computer is definitely more for heavy tasks like video editing photo editing stuff like that technically you could install windows on it and you could probably play a lot of games but i think if you're going to use it mainly as a gaming computer you could save a lot of money and get far better value for your money buying basically a gaming laptop okay so how snappy is the 4k editing and Final Cut Pro. Uh, I'm constantly surprised. I've edited about 10 videos on the MacBook Pro. I'm using Final Cut Pro and um, that's like the only software that I use on this computer basically. I, I love Final Cut Pro so so much. I don't use the proxy mode because when I've tested to use it I basically see no difference whatsoever. It's that snappy. It's that fast. I edit DCI 4k videos in 8-bit. I could record it in 10-bit but I usually don't. I I think the 8-bit is enough for my needs. Exporting a project is really fast. Everything depends on how advanced your projects are, how advanced, you know, if you use lots, color grading, effects, stabilization. And I usually export my videos in H.264. I would say that a 10-minute project without any background rendering takes about maybe seven or eight minutes. So it's actually faster than real time, which is pretty impressive actually but I think those results could definitely vary uh, depending on how advanced your projects are uh, do I have any regrets about it yet the only regret I have I think I mentioned a bit in my review I do kind of regret not getting one terabyte 512 is enough so far I haven't had any issues but I know that I will run into issues when I edit bigger projects you know like maybe 20 minute documentaries with lots and lots of clips but I am I'm actually planning to buy an external SSD. I was thinking something like the Samsung T7. That should be sufficient. Just get like one extra terabyte in case I need it. But yeah, it was just, it just felt too expensive to get the upgrade, you know, to go from 512 to one terabyte. It just felt too expensive. So that's why I didn't do it. Any issues with it yet? Uh, no, nothing comes to mind. I accidentally sometimes hit the touch bar and start recording the screen if you saw my review I do mention that I sort of miss the regular buttons and I actually got a tip from one of you guys in the comments section that you can actually replace the touch bar sliders and stuff like that to get the exact same button layout that you got on previous MacBooks so I'm super pleased about it but uh, issues um, no no sudden reboots no graphic glitches or anything like that sometimes when I edit projects in Final Cut Pro I do get this issue you know with the, the beach ball you know uh, for those of you who have a Mac computer you probably have seen the, the beach ball it's when the computer is like sort of thinking it's stalling uh, I don't know what that is because it's not like really big things sometimes I just switch layouts or something and it just suddenly freezes for just a couple of seconds I'm guessing that's probably the Final Cut Pro trial version that I'm using that isn't fully optimized or hasn't been updated I'm not sure but yeah other than that no no issues whatsoever does it get very loud no but to be completely completely fair I do have a hearing deficiency so it probably doesn't bother me as it could perhaps bother other people but also I usually use airpods or cans do people still say cans <laughs> 
and I think that that helps a lot. So the, the fans don't really bother me. I'm just pleased that there is an effective cooling way on this laptop. Am I missing the card reader? Oh, yes, yes, very, very much. I'm, I, I'm sorry, like, I, I, I tried to think to myself that, nah, I don't need a card reader. I can just use a, a dongle or an adapter. I usually use this, the Kingston card reader, and then I use like an adapter to turn USB into USB-C. And sometimes I can't find this damn thing and I can't find a USB-C cable and I'm just sitting there just being a bit frustrated that, you know, if I just had a card reader built in, I wouldn't have had any issues with it. But that's the way it is. I'm just trying to accept it, I suppose. Uh, what do I think about the new MacBook Pro 13 inch? It looks really cool. Again, I really like the form factor of the MacBook Pro 13. I think it's super portable. It's the perfect size, really. But for my needs you know I, I really like the big screen on the MacBook Pro 16 inch so I'm not complaining but again I'm glad that they fixed the keyboard on the 13 inch it would have really ticked me off if I had actually bought the 13 inch from 2019 and this year they would have released this computer with the magic keyboard it would have really made me very sad and it was actually one of the ri those risks that made me think that i don't want to get a macbook pro 13 inch and so that's why i went with the 16 inch i mean the keyboard is important to me and and i'm sorry like i could have gotten used to the, the butterfly keyboard but it just would have felt like a step down so you know uh this is a very common question that i have been getting and it's uh, is the base model enough for 4k editing oh totally like eight core is just so overkill the upgraded gpu with eight gigabytes of vram that's more like for 8k video editing but for standard 4k editing the base model is more than sufficient you get 16 gigabytes of ram i think that covers all of your needs uh, i haven't had any issues my youtube videos aren't that complex but i haven't run into any issues whatsoever if you're gonna do an upgrade i would suggest the story just you know if you're gonna swallow your pride <laughs> and get the one terabyte it's fully understandable I, again I was thinking about it. And this is a question that doesn't really have anything to do with the MacBook Pro 16 inch, but I have been getting it. Like, how is it possible that you have so few subscribers? Well, I just started this channel just a couple of months ago. It's a fairly new channel and I, I have other channels that are more popular, but this channel is sort of a new project where I'm trying to be a bit more personal and focus a bit more on quality, not image quality, obviously, like in this video, but content quality. So yeah uh is the 16 inch large enough as only screen i haven't plugged this computer even once to a bigger 4k monitor that i have i could have but i've never really felt the need for it i like the size of the 16 inch it's perfect for my needs like when i'm editing it's perfect i mean i probably it would have been enough for me using just 13 inch uh, it's nice having a big screen like 27 inch screen but it's not an necessity to be completely honest i used to be the kind of person who used to have like three screens connected to one computer i really like to have that but i i noticed that i did really become more productive more effective i noticed that if i only focus on one screen i become more effective somehow people are different i'm not saying that there's anything wrong having two screens plugged in but for my needs no i think it's perfectly fine with 16 inch uh, should you get the macbook pro 16 inch or Dell XPS 7590. I'm not very familiar with the Dell computers, but I'm gonna have to guess very strongly that the Dell is more suitable for gaming. So you should probably get that if you're gonna game a lot. For video editing, all I can tell you is that Final Cut Pro works really, really great on this computer and it would not work at all on the Dell. Well, all the Dell computers, basically. Uh, did I buy any accessories? Well, as I mentioned before, before, I am planning to buy an external SSD. The Samsung T7 seems to be pretty fast. I think I'm gonna get the one terabyte, maybe the two terabyte even. And also I did get like a little, it's like a little slideable cover so I can slide over the web camera. So, you know, a hacker can't spy on me when I'm just using the computer. I had it on my previous computer and I really like it. It's just a way for me to feel a bit safer. I don't know, probably overkill paranoia, but no, I'm not paranoid. 
I did get a dongle, but I don't like using it. I prefer using the Kingston card reader with a USB-C adapter. But uh, as I mentioned before, I tried a, the dongle. I just didn't like it just sticking out. Just felt really wrong somehow. So, and this is a, a popular question. Is it worth buying the MacBook Pro 16 inch? This may shock you. For most people, the answer is no. It's probably not worth it because it is very expensive. And I think that most people will use their computers for browsing the web, stuff like that. So for most people, this is way overkill. And also I would say that for editing, you could do a lot of editing on like something like the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Even the MacBook Air, even though it does have a few thermal handling issues, I would still say for regular 1080p editing, it would probably handle things just fine. You know, getting the MacBook Pro 16 inch just to browse the internet, you know, check Facebook messages, uh, probably overkill, I would say. Uh, should I get the 13 or 16 MacBook? Um, I think that I mentioned it pretty much basically best in my review that if you want it to be really portable, if you're gonna travel with your computer a lot, I would definitely, definitely recommend the 13 inch MacBook Pro. There's something about that size factor, not just the frame, but also the weight. See, I don't think that the MacBook Pro 16 inch is particularly too big for traveling. I mean, it's probably smaller than some of the 15 inch models in the past, but it is heavy. It's two kilograms and having that in your backpack, you know, like that's gonna, you're gonna feel it, you know? And the MacBook Pro 13 inch, you don't really feel it as much and it has a lot smaller frame. So it's a question about portability. And for me, it was very simple. I'm not gonna travel a lot with this computer, so I don't really need it. How long will a MacBook Pro last? Okay, so my MacBook Pro 13 inch from two, late 2013, I actually used it up until this year. And to be completely honest, I could still keep on using it for just browsing the web, even light 4K editing. Like you would be surprised how many 4K projects I actually have edited on the 13 inch. So longevity wise, it was really good. The only problem I got was the damn laminated screen that, you know, the lamination uh, underneath the glass started to come off and there were these ugly marks on the glass. I really hated it and the battery was getting really bad. But other than that, it was a really sweet computer. I still have it. I haven't gotten rid of it. I'm gonna use it when I'm gonna travel. So we'll see. I know, not a very minimalistic thing to say, but you know, you pick your battles. Can the MacBook Pro 16 inch be upgraded? Sadly, no, you can't upgrade anything on it. Which dongle is the best? Well, I've tested a few dongles. I even bought one dongle. Um, I've had mixed results. As I mentioned before, I just really prefer using this um, Kingston SD card reader and just connecting the bottom here to a USB-C adapter. It worked the best for me. What do you like best about the MacBook Pro 16? I really like the screen, not just the size, but also the true tone. And I also really like the slim bezels, you know? I like the keyboard, I like the snappy speed of this computer. It, I mean, it handles anything I throw at it, like a champ. Is the MacBook Pro 16 inch good for music production? Uh, I only use GarageBand from time to time to make simple tracks. Nothing more advanced than that, so I wouldn't call myself a music producer exactly. But I know that a lot of people in the past have used the MacBook Pro for music production using software like Logic. And since this is the most powerful MacBook Pro yet, I would say that the answer is yes. The MacBook Pro 16 inch is good for music production. I think I can say that without being an advanced user. Uh, what are the differences between the 15 inch and the 16 inch? Uh, besides the screen, it's mostly the GPU and the thermal handling. It's got these bigger vents and just a better way to cool down the CPU. And of course, the keyboard is vastly improved. Okay, that's all I had. If you have any questions, just put them below and I promise to get back to you on any question that you have, okay? Uh, and if you haven't seen the MacBook Pro review that I did, I'm gonna put a link in the video description so you can check it out firsthand.
Okay, and now it's time for my behind the scenes vlog. As you know, I do this main thing on this channel. At least that's something that I try to do. I have like this main video topic and then I do like a behind the scenes kind of thing. Okay, so this channel is definitely growing. I've had like a hundred subscribers in like the last 20 days. It's just wonderful. And it's mostly because of the new MacBook Pro 16 inch review video and also the digital minimalism videos. So that's kind of cool. I was a bit upset or not upset, but a bit scared because I'm, I, I was afraid that this was going to turn into a tech channel that was sort of forcing me to turn this into a tech channel. And I've been thinking a lot about this and I think that it's probably because as much as I don't want to be a geek, in my heart, I guess I am a bit of a geek. You know, I like computers, I like cameras, and I like talking about tech. And I should probably focus on talking about things that I find interesting instead of talking about things that I think would be cool, but that I'm really not that interested in. You know what I mean? So what I'm saying is, I don't think that this channel is ever gonna be like a full gore tech channel but I don't mind doing a review here and there. And I'm also kind of interested in how I can use maybe a different approach to making tech videos, like making like a minimalist tech kind of videos. You know what I mean? Like combining those two things because those two things, tech and minimalism, these are two topics that I find very interesting. And speaking of, uh, I do have a new favorite YouTuber. That's also kind of interesting. I seem to be switching a lot, but right now I'm super interested in this YouTuber. You probably know him as Potato Jet. His real name is actually Gene Nagata, and he has a main channel, Potato Jet, uh, where he talks a lot about cameras and camera gear and stuff like that. That's, that's like his main channel. And then he also has this personal channel where he just vlogs about just about anything. It's kind of fun to watch both both those channels. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna do something like that. I think that I'm gonna do everything on one channel though and just try to accept the fact that I like different topics. Sometimes I like to talk about life philosophy and sometimes I like to talk about tech, you know? Okay, and how is the pandemic going? Uh, okay, so for me, it's, as usual, it's working really well. I'm still working from home. I think we've all gotten used to it by now, everyone in the world. And in Sweden, like, there hasn't been that many changes, except for a part that most of us are working from home. But we don't really have, like, a lockdown or anything like that. So, yeah, I kind of enjoy it, you know, working from home. But I do know that there are some people who are completely freaked out about this whole thing. Now, I understand that there's a lot of people in the world that are like freaked out about Sweden and why we are not locked down, like if we're stubborn or stupid or anything like that. I'm not gonna go too much into this topic. Let me just give you like the short version, okay? The short version is basically this. Sweden is in a very crowded place. The idea for us living in a lockdown situation, it's like we're sort of already there, okay? So that's the reason why we don't really have a lockdown. It's true, our schools are open and everything is basically open, but we just try to stay more from home, eat more from home, not meet a lot of people, avoid crowds, stuff like that. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So just a little short vlog, I'm doing great. Thank you for watching this video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care.